My name is Ali Hussein and I'm a revert to Islam of three years in August and I became Muslim when I was 16. Basically when I was a teenager, when I was just growing up, um, I think it was when I was about 15. I was growing into this hip-hop music, for example now, Tupac, uh, 50 Cent and all that. I tried to um, get a, a program to sing hip-hop, but um, it never materialised. But I still had a strong love for hip hop because it was like part of the rebel, rebel against society attitude. That was what drew me into it. What people don't understand is as well, these people, they're not heroes, they're not robbers, they are criminals and they're thugs. Because these people are happy to brag and to glorify shooting a, a kid who's perhaps only 14, 15 years old down the street. They're glorifying drugs, which is like committing suicide. Because when people take drugs, they start to self-harm. It's like a form of killing yourself. And when they start talking about women, start calling them their, you know, their, you know, their uh, property. When people start to follow this, it shows a lot of like inner sadness, and they feel like they must fit in to follow it. Basically, um, I wasn't a major alcoholic. I drank minor, but I, f I think it was more like my mum or dad gave me something to drink. I can't remember exactly what age. When I drank it, it was more like trying to fit in because I was quite different from many other kids my age. I drank it to fit in. I remember when I was at a party a couple of years ago, like some years ago before I reverted, and I was drunk. I was like completely out of it, and I didn't know what was going on. And and I and I was very sick about that, and I realised this doesn't this isn't right. Even when I was a non-Muslim, I realised this was wrong. And and pe and basically with this, I noticed from my experience, it's it's nothing but a form of uh, self harm. That's what I was. Now with alcohol, everyone knows. Even a lot of non-Muslims know. You can go on the NHS. They spend out billions of pounds every year treating these people who are suffering from alcohol abuse, vomiting on the sidewalk and so on and so forth. They are basically killing themselves. How many people do you see when they binge drink, right? They end up being raped, beaten up, you know, causing violence and mayhem, and they could choke on their own vomit. Also, when people are selling alcohol or encouraging it, they forget that alcohol even if it has a tiny amount of good, the harm outweighs the good. I was a person, in, I remember in my ignorance that I used to be a person who used to believe television and newspapers. But when people look at it in the bigger picture, it's nothing about brainwashing. Because it's more like just based on mere suspicion or mere accusation rather than proof and uh, affirmation. I was like one of these people who used to be like fascist. I remember once I drew a swat sticker in a classroom and basically um, I used to hate black people and Asians and Arabs basically um, but when I, I I admired Hitler for his extermination of the Jews because I thought he did something good and I, I remember when I was young I took out a book about Hitler and I showed it in front of the classroom people were quite horrified I merely liked him because he I thought that his views were understandable. Little did I realise that this was a hallmark of evil and a stepping stone to ignorance. I used to be a fascist, a proper fascist. I mean, I used to be a Holocaust denier as well. And I completely shun, you know, Hitler and Nazism. And I don't see it as anything more but evil. And I used to give the Nazi salute as well. So I probably would have voted for the BNP if my hatred towards racism was still continuing um, because I used to think the white race was superior and anyone else who isn't white is inferior and then subhuman but but when I saw but when I saw more into how basically how wrong this racism is it is more over based on ignorance and arrogance because the BNP was like they, they, they target the, the, the misguided uh, ignorant people. I was like one of these people who was misguided into racism and Nazism. And I was like thinking, you know, I used to have a Nazi mentality. I wouldn't say violent, but it was more like my views that would cause more offence really than violence. And 
to hate someone for their colour of their skin or nationality is is absurd because we are human beings. We cannot judge someone based on the colour. You judge them on what who they are inside. I stopped becoming racist and anti-Muslim when I started interacting more and started speaking. When I started speaking, I started to understand and begin to tolerate and I started to for example, I started speaking to loads of black people, Asians, Arabs, and I thought, you know, this isn't right, what I used to be like. I thought that this was wrong, and, and when I started to understand that they were people like me, I started to respect that, because now I completely hate racism. I absolutely shun it. I hate it, because I remember how I used to be, and, um, but when, um, when I started interacting, that is when you get to understand and start to appreciate that there is a diversity of race and culture because Allah has told us that this is among the signs about people speaking different languages and your colours and race are of the signs. From <coughs> during, this, during 2007, my aunt, who I was very close to, um, had an illness. She had cancer and she was in hospital. During this time, I spoke to Muslims on the computer, basically, and they were saying, oh, we hope your aunt gets better. And I thought, oh, these people seem very nice and genuine to care so much for me and my aunt. And um, sadly, she passed away in 2007. I was very hurt by that. And then um, after a couple of months, I started reading more about Islam, and I thought, oh, this is actually very interesting. Then my grandmother died in 2008. So that was the two family deaths in just in the space of a year. And um, what happened was I started reading more about Islam and I was dispelling my former beliefs one by one. And uh, basically what happened was um, I started to understand my purpose and I wanted to get to know who Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth is. So I started quitting all my taboos. I started to change in itself. And what happened was, I started to find out more and more every day. My mother, who's an atheist, may I guide her, she bought me a Quran to read after I persisted. And also during this time, there was the film Fitna, which was made by Gert Wilders. And I was like, hang on, what are you talking about in this film, I thought. So then I thought, hang on, this isn't right. The film actually pushed me closer towards Al Islam, instead of pushing me away. And when people start to see more into this religion, they start to find an inner peace. And I took my Shahada on August the 1st, 2008. I started to learn about my deen slowly. I was into the grips and the love of Sufism. And uh, people were saying about Wahhabi this, Wahhabi that. Until I started reading Kitab al then I completely changed my Aqidah and followed uh, um, al Sunnah wa Jama'ah. My uh, journey to Islam has not been easy, it has been quite rocky at the beginning, but it has always been an, an adventure. And I hope, inshallah, that we are continue to have m more, more good days. And also, basically what happened was, um, every, when I first reverted, um, I went through some trials at college. There was like some anti-Muslim hatred. And um, I had the police at my house a couple months after I reverted. I still do not know why. Um, and during this time, um, I started to see a lot of um, frustration amongst many Muslims. The, we, uh, the Muslims are being oppressed. And, and during this time, basically, I, I came, I've seen a few times my, the people I used to be more like, the EDL. And uh, since then, it's been... You know, <laughs> it's been like, since taking part in some controversial protests, you know, such as a barking, uh, American Embassy, poppy burning, you know, the EDL have now made me one of their sworn enemies. But my message to them is basically, Alhamdulillah, Allah has shown me the light, and may Allah guide you towards the light. I used to be like you, I used to be racist, I used to hate non-whites, but Allah has saved me from that. The Prophet has told us about how he's, um, how one of his biggest enemies, some of his biggest enemies became Muslim.
And basically, this, this religion is so beautiful, it is so easy to understand, it's so easy to follow. And I am amazed at one who knows the bounties of Allah, but I don't appreciate it. I try my best to follow the Quran and Sunnah. It is easy to follow, alhamdulillah. Uh, and, and when I used to be like, I used to be a person who believed in democracy before. I used to be like a conservative supporter, but I've never voted. But Allah, all praises due to He, the Most High, has shown me that all this is falsehood. It brings nothing but tyranny and misguidance. And I, I believe in the sovereignty and the legislation is put only to Allah. My life, as it was before, was filled with sin. And I, and I was surrounded and brainwashed by materialism and outer aspects without focusing on my inward self. Because I've learned, when I saw things my own eyes, people, for example, they, they um, when they turn to alcohol, they are so unhappy inside. But the alcohol makes them worse. I lived through this myself. But I saw that all what this was was about showing off and getting a good reputation and not caring for other people. It was more like an attitude of me, 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 instead of caring for other people. And when we have saw how people have become so selfish, we, we forget that we are here to help people, not to look down upon them. I changed. It took a while. I was 16 when I became Muslim and I'm 19 years old now. So how common is that for a 16 year old to embrace Islam? A religion that's so talked about in the newspapers and so demonised by many people nowadays.